This book is, has the same main title, In Search of Europe, but the undertitle is different. It's uh, Art and Research in Collaboration and Experiment. And when we were applying for this project, uh, the shape of the exhibition was a very big experimental thing. But one thing that was clear from the beginning also because uh, the ministry, the funding body, the Ministry of Education, put a lot of emphasis on that, was that there would be a book. And from early on, it became already clear that this book would probably not be a simple catalogue. <coughs> it would be something else in a catalogue very much already by the very fact that it would be coming out by the opening of the book, which was decided quite early actually by me, and which did not get, which caused quite some stress because usually catalogues come out months after opening and you don't want to have the stress of making a book at the same time while you make the exhibition. And so that is my fault, but in, in, the, in the end of managed to actually get the book done in this very narrow time schedule and we've got a beautiful book out and it's a, I find the book itself is an experiment because it is neither a typical exhibition catalog, which is what exhibitions usually are accompanied by, nor, the, nor is it the kind of book that we as academics are used to produce. What we produce as books are either what we call monographs, books we write ourselves on an academic topic or edited volumes which collect scholarly essays. This book has a much more personal take. It is much more also a report, a reflection by the people who were in this process of collaboration about what they did, why they did it, how they did, how they tackled certain issues, how they went on about the process. Because this process has been very central for the whole project. But of course, you cannot fill an exhibition with a problem. An exhibition is something fine, it is a result. But there was a lot on the way that is quite interesting and at times as interesting. And also because, for me at least, as an academic, I have a very particular love for the book. There is something that in our profession binds us with book, with our heart blood, more than with the spoken word, more than with any other means of the communication. And having a book in your hand gives me a sense of accomplishment and uh, yeah, a sort of happiness, pride that we are here today. Uh, the idea for this uh, book was to create something which goes beyond the exhibition, which has a life uh, beyond the exhibition, uh, because also you have to see these commissions were not ready at the point we produced the book. So we were in the middle or like in the end uh, time of this process of collaboration. And um, well, researchers produce books. Um, artists produce sometimes also books, but you know, this is the platform where the artists and the researchers are really coming together is this book talking about how this uh, process, how this collaboration really took shape in all these different uh, cases and in all variations and diversities possible. Um, what was very important to us was you know, the, 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 the exhibition is called Auf Augenhöhe in einer ungleichen Welt. And uh, language is a major part in it. So the hegemony of uh, English in the arts, for example, but also in research, uh, we wanted to break this down. And uh, we tried to do that in the book in giving every uh, author the possibility to write in the language he feels comfortable with. I mean, some are really accustomed uh, in uh, writing in English, uh, some are accustomed to writing in German, but uh, Jemus wrote his article in Portuguese and we translated it uh, to English. Uh, Mohammed was writing in, uh, in Arabic and uh, Iskandar in standards wrote in Arabic. Uh, as I was writing in Turkish. So we tried to uh, bring this multiplicity uh, and also equality of languages uh, also into this book. So, uh, um, I mean, it was not possible in the exhibition because uh, it's very time consuming and takes a lot of effort and also money, which we didn't have. But, uh, you know, as an idea, as a uh, uh, wish, to also show this kind of uh, programmatic uh, approach we tried uh, to, to do, you can see this in this book. Um, 
it is also an art book for us. So the collaboration with EPS M50 uh, was, I think, very fruitful. And uh, uh, Sasha, Sasha is uh, today here. He's one of the three uh, EPS M50 uh, team members. And they've been doing an amazing job in taking on uh, this collaboration with us in developing this book in uh, thinking, conceptualizing how to bring the concept into a graphic uh, visual concept and uh, how to think this book. And I think it's a beautiful, uh, very, uh, it's a beautiful product. And um, uh, next to Sasha sits uh, Elinor Yapsam. Uh, she is the publisher of the book. She has taken on, uh, you know, distributing it and publishing it. And uh, she uh, she is uh, based in Holland. And she came here to join us today. So thanks for being here. And um, well, during the exhibition, we will sell this book for 10 euros, which is a special price. We really want uh, that uh, many people take home. <laughs> Uh, this book, which hopefully also adds something to the discourse of collaborations and you know how art and research uh, in the humanities can come together and uh, what it could provide or also what it can't provide. I would like to mention that um, I've been asked to edit, uh, to help editing this book. We've been beginning of this year, so I've been involved in this project only for the editing process and for relatively short time, um, respectively since April, I've been um, doing this. So I only know the project through the texts I've been reading. And I think this is a very uh, important point. Um, and I would like to mention two aspects um, that I think now um, are, for me, important when I look back. Um, first of all, I would like to um, I would like to talk about the the process of writing and of reflecting and um, the necessity of producing a book when you already have uh, an exhibition. <laughs> and I think um, in general, um, through reading the, the text and um, thinking about them, um, it, it became very clear to me that um, writing on something is a very good um, means to, to reflect on uh, an experience that you made because you need to, to put something in words and to make a decision on what stays on the paper and not. And I think this was... Um, I, or I could, I, I've been seeing it um, on the, in the text of the authors, this was a very personal and very intense process for um, all the authors and artists. Thank you. So, um, the book is lying here. You already saw it, so it's uh, get outside. It's also projected on the back of here. Thank you for your introduction. Maybe a small applause for the editorial team. <laughs> The last sentence uh, you have mentioned, uh, Karin, about uh, what, are, what is art and what is research supposed to do for society. And I must say, um, as we were beginning with our project, I was very skeptical uh, about what we are doing here, because I thought, okay, um, I'm a researcher in a certain society, and I'm going to work with an artist uh, of another society. So how, how can we both be? Uh, working together in a critical way because we are doing something completely different. Not only as a researcher and artist, but also because we are engaging with completely different societies. So as we then met, and uh, Mohammed got introduced to the idea of the ISO project, um, and we started to talk together, to meet, uh, to go to exhibitions and uh, bookshops, and exchange our thoughts, I realized that yeah, we have much more in common um, than it uh, looked in the very beginning. And actually we found out that we are part of the same society somehow. And this is because we were born after the Second World War and we were realizing that the impact of the war 
and uh, global capital society on our lives and families and also on our work is much bigger than we, we would have thought. We did not reflect about it before, but it came out in our uh, talks and collaborations. So this is one thing which I find very important. We could really connect uh, as we discovered this. The second thing, I was uh, also skeptical, very skeptical, because of the topic of my research. So I'm doing research on Islamic thought uh, and Islamic, Islamist practice. And um, I thought I will never ever find somebody in the artist world who would collaborate with me. Because this is exactly what Islamists, I mean, this kind of Islamism as we may define it, um, a liberal dem democratic societies, let's say, um, with this kind of modern contemporary art in its very heart, would never go together. So, also, maybe I thought uh, any artist would have to be afraid about uh, working on Islamism. It doesn't make any sense in Egypt to work about uh, an Islamist. But I we found, uh, so Daniela introduced me to more than uh, one artist, but then we found out that Mohammed would do it and that he's since a longer time interested in this kind of thought, Islamist thought and practice. So that, that's maybe two points uh, which, which are most interesting. For me and for myself. Actually, in the beginning, which is uh, 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 from two years ago when I first met uh, Tina, it was uh, a turning point uh, in my arts practice. I was really uh, uh, concentrated to how I can work without any, as uh, the arts practice can become abstract from this kind of ethnicity or uh, uh, rationality or uh, exoticism. And, Topics. Uh, so first, I was really afraid when we were talking about her topics, which is very sensitive and uh, uh, in context of art practice, it's a, a really exotic topic. Uh, but, in, but on the other hand, I was really also interested to take this advantage. After a while, after after several meetings, Tina. Uh, I was interested in context of uh, just apples, also as a researcher, not as an artist, the first that was not about. <laughs> and, uh, and how it was also like uh, for me, how I can uh, translate all our uh, brainstorm and, uh, and all our uh, documentation and daily, uh, daily information we brainstorm and uh, how, how I can translate it all to, to art practice, to visual language, not documentation. Uh, so the, the value what I, what, I, what I feel and what it, uh, the book is reflect, what our contribution is reflect, which is how we can, the value not to find extension, uh, extension for how we can work as an artist and researcher more than the value of uh, trying to find extension, not the reason. That's why we already, I think, we didn't find a, a real extension, we can, but we, we tried different uh, possibilities, how we can break. And uh, one, the most important uh, like extension we was using, which is how we can work in with uh, biopolitics, our biography uh, from perspective of uh, Events and uh, uh, how the politics is affected in our biography. And uh, yeah, uh, one of the exception, which is uh, how we can collect information uh, about the economy, which is how what we did in the what we class we did in the blog, uh, the kind of blog, which is asking friends and colleagues about several topics. And uh, in context also of commitment, I stopped. Uh, I didn't continue it uh, because I was thinking it's uh, uh, for me as an artist, it's like it's a, um, like the information that was enough to I can start from here. But maybe for you as a researcher, it was, it was not enough. So this kind of how we can try to find the extension, uh, the trying to raise possibilities to find that was a value to find real extension, see, like you find the methodology you work with.
let me say a few words on our collaboration. Um, you, you heard what Charlotte had to say on the project that we did, or the results. Uh, we did this, this uh, photographic sound installation work that, that, that deals with the question of the voices of a particular individual. And, um, in a way, um, the her work and, and the text that we contributed and the text are quite, uh, quite different in the way that they have a concrete result, a kind of an attempt to actually deal um, with this challenge of doing um, art research on something, while the text is, is actually not so much a portrayal of our collaboration, but a much more theoretical attempt to, to reflect on the relation between art and science, uh, taking the, our two specific disciplines, uh, ethnography and photography. And the, the text kind of tends to, 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 to really reflect on that relation and ask if they are so different or not, and if, if they are different, where, where do these uh, differences really um, lie? Um, <coughs> these kind of discussions have been informing on the collaboration for a long time, and we were very much reluctant to actually start working on something specific because we felt that there are much more questions and problems than, than, um, than solutions to the questions we were asking. And then from a little bit from my own concern, concerns that I had developed in my, in my work on migration, the, um, the topic of voice emerged, which is a kind of um, methodological imperative now for contemporary anthropology in the sense that Texts that merely represent others are often rightly um, criticized as, as, as being um, somehow autocratic and somehow monopolizing the representation. So there is always this demand for the voice of the ethnographic subject. And uh, when I was um, trying to, 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 to talk about this, um, Charles immediately um, Kind of triggered and, 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 and inspired that question because in photography there was a very similar problem. You're dealing with people constantly, while the perhaps most important, the most significant uh, element of what a human being is, uh, the capacity to, to speak, to say, to speak for yourself, to think, to utter your emotions, etc., is kind of um, what you call this. Um, the, the, this kind of empty space in the representation. So, so from there, somehow the, the collaboration became in that regard very effective. It triggered my theoretical work a lot, helped me to develop this, and it helped you, I think, to then come up actually with this um, concrete work, which you may want to say uh, something else. Uh, I don't know if you want to add something. Ich glaube, du hast eigentlich so den ähm, Kernpunkt, äh, Kernpunkt schon gesagt, also dass, ähm, dass diese Zusammenarbeit also erstmal als äh, ein Suchen angefangen hat und ganz lange auch Suchen war, äh, wo können wir uns treffen, können wir uns überhaupt treffen mit unterschiedlichen Arbeitsweisen und ähm, unterschiedlichen Ausdrucksweisen und Methoden. Ähm, und dann, also was mich ganz besonders fasziniert hat, ist wirklich so dieses, ähm, also dieser, dieses Moment, wo es passiert. So, ähm, und das war in dem konkreten Fall, wie du auch gesagt hast, ähm, das Thema der Stimme. Und äh, was ich vielleicht noch hinzufügen würde, ist, dass äh, wir haben uns äh, vorgestern äh, getroffen und haben so ein bisschen reflektiert, äh, okay, wie war es? Äh, wir haben uns jetzt auch äh, einige Zeit nicht sehen können, äh, weil wir auch weit weg wohnen und so weiter und auch jede seine Projekte hat und so weiter. Und äh, die Feststellung war, dass wir jetzt eigentlich äh, vielleicht auch am Anfang einer Collaboration sind. So. Also jetzt können wir eigentlich auch anfangen, zusammenzuarbeiten. Nach einem Jahr.
pity that I'm alone here and my counterpart Ezra can't be here because now you get only my perspective. Do I have five minutes, ten, or two and a half? It's not getting more. Okay, <laughs> I didn't know. So, um, yeah, as I said, it's really, it's just my personal perspective on this process of collaboration and as you already kindly introduced me, I'm working on Ottoman travel writings to the post Ottoman Balkans. And what Ezra and me um, did, where we met several times, where we discussed my project on the basis of the material I gave to her, which we shared, and there already started the disadvantage Ezra had because she came into a, yeah into a project which was already loosely framed by me. So she had to find a way to go through this, to, to my ideas, to find her own inspiration. Um, but in this whole process, from my perspective, um, there was not really a difference in our working methods, because we both like tried to find a way through this to, to achieve our goals. Um, we didn't follow a predetermined path, like we, we tried out different things, so what my conclusion from this collaboration was that it's not really about this collaboration between research and art, but rather a collaboration between two persons um, who try to find a way to work together. And for me it was um, often inspiring and very fruitful, but because it is a collaboration between two human beings, it also holds conflict potential. So, um, it can go different ways. Um, but as I said, I didn't saw the difference in our working methods or in this whole process, not in this um, difference between, uh, not in the process itself, but in the results, since um, I have to submit at the end a dissertation, so a text, which is bound to certain rules and conventions, which I have to follow, um, and as for I had to produce an artwork, which I thought is much more free or experimental. Um, but for me, this, this producing an ac academic text doesn't mean um, a limitation. I mean, I, I like to follow these conventions and I think they give um, me some security and also uh, help, are helping me to, to reflect very deep on my topic and um, to be careful with my material. Um, so now I forgot. I asked Bettina at the beginning. I said I prepared something. I wrote something down, and she was like, "No, you shouldn't read it out. You should just be, you should speak freely." Now I forgot what I wanted to say. <laughs> 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 I profited. I profited very much in the sense that I was encouraged by this whole process with Ezra to include things into my dissertation which at first sight um, could be not so appropriate for an academic work, like putting things out of the footnotes into the main text which I tried to describe in the essay I wrote for the book. And I yesterday just came across um, a writing of one of my travelers who went to Bulgaria in 1915 and he's starting his writings with a couple of remarks. He starts like, um, it is really difficult to write a travel description as a beautiful artwork unless you are Jenab Shahabitin and Jenab Shahabitin is one of the travelers Ezra is mentioning in her, in her work. And then he goes further and says, look it is not enough that a newspaper accepted your writings and just published it, that doesn't save you at all. Um, and why I'm mentioning it here is that not that I want to write my dissertation as an artwork, since I'm not Jenal Shabitin, unfortunately, but um, like to try to make the, this academic text as enjoyable to read as possible. I think that's what I learned. Yes. Yes. Collaboration. Uh, for us, both of 
we are a bunch of people in seven different countries, in three different continents. Collaboration for us is a, is a fucking boring word, because we don't think that much, we just do our work. We don't really get the point about talking, uh, collaboration, exchange, negotiating. We do work, and the work speaks for itself. It's there, come and watch it, see, buy the book. There are people living here buying books and so on. It, it'll be wonderful for us if you buy it. And that's it. Uh, we've been exchanging a lot of ideas with uh, Francesca Baire. He knows the shit, and then uh, it's your turn. <laughs> Thank you, Pere. Even if it seems uh, very provocative, this man is a very good... Uh, hmm? <laughs> it was uh, like, I, I think I should um, explain again what uh, maybe you didn't hear before about our collaboration. I was the only one researcher uh, who didn't start the collaboration from their research. As Bettina was saying, and like all these uh, different uh, situations that has been developing, starting from uh, research, I was invited. I was invited by the artist. So the relationship was completely the opposite. They were my boss. They were my. Uh, <laughs> they were my challenge, and uh, it has been a great, great journey. Because uh, uh, at the beginning, I. I I have to say that uh, when we started working together, I really I, I thought that there was such a separation of us and them, researchers and artists. This kind of separation in anthropology is very used, very useless, I think also, sometimes, and most of the times maybe. And uh, I thought it was uh, like such a thing like researchers and artists and I remember when the first time I, I saw my text and I had my the comments by Samuli uh, he told me like we never met before with no one from here and he told me you've been reading the same stuff and I really felt like surprised you were surprised when you were writing it to me but at the end it was like we were we, we belong to the to the same uh, community, academic community, Nigerian community. We can call it uh, as we want. But uh, so at the beginning, maybe there was such uh, us and them, some way. But then in the in the collaboration, with Pera, Pera doesn't like this word collaboration. So maybe we can. Uh, like he, he prefers to use exchange, and uh, I think it's uh, an encounter that uh, makes many, many transformations in the way we work, in the way we use our tools, in the way we see our work, ourselves, at the end. And, uh, and it was very, very curious because we start, they started, I'm talking about Pera, but uh, I mean, it's, it's a collective and uh, this is something that I think is very important also for me uh, as a researcher or as a human being working with them. They had already many doors open to other people. They were collaborating all the time. I just uh, entered one of those doors and started to talk with them. And uh, and they wanted to start to work about five minutes. It's already done. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I can finish just with the, with the one thing that uh, uh, was very interesting for me to go back to see a documentary about Pierre Bourdieu, sociology, uh, martial art, and uh, he, in one part of the documentary, he says that uh, researchers are becoming uh, more and more like artists nowadays, and I really, can, I really think that uh, this is true, especially in Spain now, we are, I live in Spain, and I'm based there, and it's like, the academic environment is falling down, really. And uh, I am sure that Boudier was talking about uh, academic precarization. But maybe what we've been uh, living here is uh, not the good part of it, because I don't think that there is a good part of it, but it's another way of uh, looking at uh, this transformation. 
uh, I was in a different position as my research colleagues because I am actually working about arts in Mozambique, so I didn't have to uh, look very far for my research to find or to search for, for an artist. And when uh, I was thinking about how, what, what do I want from this exchange and what do I need for it and I will be working three or four years with this person so what do I actually want and um, I realized first after I met Jemuse that uh, the most important thing for me was someone I actually can exchange my thoughts and ideas and you know when you're a researcher and you are doing all these interviews most of the time it's like there are people talking a lot and you're hearing, but it's great for us, but it's also very nice if you actually find someone who you can go again with your conclusions and talk to them again and get the reactions and then um, decide or, or think about together if your thoughts are actually good or not, you know, like this kind of exchange. Sometimes you have great ideas and then you get to talk to the people and you find out that that's so stupid actually or so essential or it's not that necessary, not that important that she said. And um, just maybe to finish, well, that's what I was uh, searching for and then I actually realized that I really needed that when I met him. And I think I, was, I am very grateful that uh, there was such this kind of empathy between us that we could really get to know each other very good and to exchange and to have uh, discussions and fought some kind of fight sometimes, and, but it didn't matter because we could go back again and, and talk to each other and discuss the more important uh, things. And um, for me, all this collaboration process was actually kind of self-reflection about me, myself, my role as an anthropologist. As a Colombian living in Germany, working about Africa, I thought, I know it, I understand it. I am very self-reflexive. And um, when he when I read his text and he said, well actually she's kind of Eurocentric, I was very shocked. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no. <laughs> Many other things, but not Eurocentric. But um, yeah, I guess I am. I was. I would be. I mean I have been living here so long. Maybe our Colombia is also Eurocentric. I don't know. <laughs> But it gave me uh, the opportunity to make a more deeper reflection of me, myself, and my role as an anthropologist, and I'm very thankful for that. Why? I have one minute, is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, Two minutes. Okay. Um, what, what I want to add, uh, she said everything, of course. Uh, but I would like to add that uh, uh, I was very uh, excited, uh, in fact, to, to have discussions with uh, Vanessa uh, because the way that she were putting questions were very uh, deep and made me uh, think uh, different and forward with uh, how I like to grow as an artist, so I, would, I like to be confronted. I had her confronting me in that case, so I was very excited to continue this relationship. If you see, I just realized it now, in the book, uh, I was saying, you, uh, your text is focusing too much on me. And then she was saying, you two did the same. <laughs> so, uh, uh, this collaboration uh, was very uh, interesting to me to uh, get to, to get into uh, uh, her, her life, uh, and that's why the concept of uh, the work is much negotiation than collaborating, because negotiating uh, anyone can give up. That I don't want any more butter because you are so cheap or you are so uh, expensive. Then you go just away. Uh, but to negotiate. Um, co uh, no, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> the word, the official word. Collaboration. The collaboration. <laughs> 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 
official Well, for me, uh, my turn of um, uh, collaborating, uh, it's like uh, when you are invited to collaborate, you sign uh, a contract, you have to collaborate. Uh, then you have to collaborate. <laughs> so, thank you. <laughs> I just um, want to say um, thank you for uh, Daniel and some wonderful money in this project from the beginning and also thank my uh, friend with Belzec for being also in that project uh, from the beginning. Um, there are two things that we mentioned. One thing that we mentioned earlier about the statement of uh, how we can uh, collaborate for being on equal footing in an equal in equal world. And uh, what Daniela said about the hegemony of the English language and the Western culture. Um, and therefore, probably, I will speak in Arabic. Of course, the project started in about 20 years, 20 years ago. And I and my friend, the method, were working together and we were working with Daniela to help her in the problem of how to make the الباحثين والفنانين يعملوا سوا وكان عملنا بعض الورك شوبس عشان نتعامل مع بعض ونفهم بعض وفي النهايه دانيال عزمتني ان انا اشترك في المعرض كمان وعزمتني ان اكتب في الكتاب. العنوان المقاله اللي كتبتها فريدفول فروتفول اور نو فريدفول نو فريدفول فريدفول اور فروتفول والعنوان دوت جاء من غلطه مطبعيه وانا بكتب المقاله في البدايه كنت عاوز اكتب كلمه فروتفول بس كان في غلطه مطبعيه ولما بصيت في القاموس عشان اشوف الغلطه المطبعيه دي معناها ايه لقيت ان المعاني الثانيه قررت ان اسمي المقاله الثلاث معاني والثلاث معاني بيعبروا عن الحاله النفسيه والحاله العمليه اللي كنا فيها في المشروع ان كان في ناس عندها خوف من المشروع في البدايه كان في ناس عندها نوع من مكان ما بين الخوف وما بين الرغبه في العمل سويا وفي ناس كانوا متوقعين النتيجه الكويسه نتيجه جيده زي ما حصل ما بين ليلى وما حصل ما بين كموس وانسه وناس ثانيه. فانا كتبت تجربتي الشخصيه في المشروع وازاي انا مريت بالمساعدات والاعمال اللي عملناها وازاي مراقبتي اللي كان بيحصل في المشروع. الشيء اللي لفت نظري لما كتبنا المقاله في الكتاب ان ان انا كتبت المقاله وبعتها لسامولي ودانيال عشان يشوفوها وعجبتهم المقاله لكن بعض الباحثين قرروا ان في مشكله في المقاله وطلبوا اعاده النظر فيها. وانا اعتقدت ان ده حاجه غريبه جدا لان ده المفروض ان المقاله تتكتب لما تتكتب ونشر. والله بقى الناس تقرا وتقول على نظرك لكن كان في نوع من الرغبه في في المراقبه وانا اعتقدت دوت حاجه يعني الى حد ما بتعبر عن العلاقه ما بين الباحثين والفنانين واللي كانوا مشتركين الناس اللي مشتركه في المشروع بشكل عام وكانت حاجه مهمه انها تحصل ان الحساسيه دي نوع من الحساسيات ونوع من الاحتكاك والخشونه بتتعامل احيانا وال حاولت عدم يعني وجود نوع من التسييس في التعامل ما بين الجانبين زي ما بنقول في الكامب بتاع المعسكر بتاع الباحثين ومعسكر الفنانين وازاي موضوع فكره ان تقدم موضوع الاخر يعني ازاي ان يعني ايه احنا بنبص لنفسنا ونشوف الاخر فانا في مفهومي الشخصي ان فكره العمل الجماعي العمل مع الاخرين لازم تبدا من موضوع القرب. لازم أن يكون هناك فكره القرب، فكره العطاء. وفكره العطاء ديت تبدا من الشخص للاخر وممكن يحصل انعكاس موازي في الاتجاه الاخر. وده بيبني برضه على الموضوع الاساسي بتاعنا اللي هو موضوع في البحث عن اوروبا. ان اوروبا مشكلتها الاساسيه الان هو ليس بناء حوائط وموانع لمنع الاخرين من الهدوم لكن الحل الاساسي لاوروبا انها تفتح ابوابها باقصى قدر ممكن عشان يحصل نوع من العطاء في الاتجاه العكسي ويمكن يكون ده بمطلوب. شكرا. I'm not going to bore you with 
with my dribble in the, in the, in the book that I wrote, I think you can read that yourself. Um, what I wanted to say here is a few things. And, and, and the first thing is, I mean, thank you very much for, for, for being here and, and you being here and, and doing the work that you do. Um, but when we, I met Daniela in 2009 in New York, um, Karem and I spoke to her in 2010 about her previous projects and about the future project that she's doing. And she was saying, oh yeah, there is going to be a, a bunch of researchers, scientists, and we were like, oh yeah, fantastic, that's fantastic. <laughs> and, um, and, and she said, oh yeah, but then I want to engage artists as well, because that's part of the exhibition. I was like, oh yeah, great. And she said, oh, I want them to collaborate. I was like, really mad. <laughs> um, because that, um, the official word, the word that we were, washed it, wore it again, and washed it many, many, many more times, uh, has become beloved, the hated, the, 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 the most talked about and despised term um, that, that, that we are talking about, basically. And collaboration is not something that, that, that we as artists or scientists can, can take lightly. It's, it's, it's basically a relationship. If any of you have been in a relationship, personal or professional, knows that it's mental. Um, if you don't know how to negotiate, you're screwed. And if you're screwed, you're, you don't have work. Um, and I would like to, I mean, that's basically it. And I would like to open this discussion around this because we were we were presented with one of the hardest tasks went to the to the gutter and back washed our underwear so many times and 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 it somewhat turned out all right with quite a few blemishes on on, on those shorts um, so you know speaking to researchers artists it was a bumpy road not mentioning that in the text. I'm not saying why. Um, but th this is where we are. Uh, it's 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 been a three years of struggle, successes, failures, and negotiations, and, and we we're sitting in a show which seems to be pretty well considered.